Hey kids, here I am in my, I'm in my basement right now actually. I had to stay home today because I wasn't feeling very good. And I thought, I haven't read a book in a while, so I decided I was going to read one that's been kind of on my mind for a while because there's been a lot of un uncomfortable and strange rules starting to happen in different places. So the book I'm reading today is called Pink, Blue, and You by Elise Gravel. And can you believe it? It's actually been banned in a lot of places because it talks about things that make people uncomfortable. And uh, unfortunately, when people are uncomfortable, they like to ban books. So I'm going to read it and you can share it and share it and share it so that more people can hear about the position that Elise Gravel takes in this book, which is one of love and kindness and acceptance and supporting people in their gender identity and in their bodies that they have and helping them to feel loved and accepted and not hated and pushed away and hidden. So um, yeah, please share if you'd like to and I'm going to turn the camera around now and read it to you. Okay, here we have the book. Pink, Blue and You by Elise Gravel with Mikhail Blaise. Questions for kids about gender stereotypes. What is a stereotype? That can be something with gender or it can be with all kinds of things, with race or ability and disability. All kinds of things can have stereotypes. Sometimes people are stereotypes about when people are rich or poor. There's all kinds of ways that you can imagine about a person, you could say, you're like this because you look like this. Or you should be like this because you seem like that just based on what I know about you. The small amount I know about you. It's always better to get to know somebody, the whole person, not just base things on what they look like or where they're from. Look at these pictures. Are some for girls? Are some for boys? Are some for everyone? So here we have a bunch of different things. Pink things, soccer, blue things, science, babies, short hair, long hair, ballet, video games, skateboards, princesses, unicorns, dinosaurs, dolls, trucks, makeup, building blocks, flowers, cooking, fart jokes, books, and wrestling. I bet there's a lot of things on that page that you like to do, and everybody has different interests. I'm going to say my favorite things when I was a kid were, hmm, let me think. I had short hair, so I liked short hair. I really wanted to learn how to skateboard, but my brother was the one who got a skateboard. I probably maybe didn't talk about it enough, but I also feel like maybe I was nervous about asking for a skateboard because... Maybe I wouldn't get a, be allowed to have one. I don't know. I just felt like maybe I wasn't allowed. Hmm, what else did I like? I like playing with dolls. I also really like dinosaurs and books and building blocks. And I definitely like trucks and cars. I had a sandbox that I played with my cars and trucks when I was really little. And now I like cooking and flowers. And I have longer hair. It's medium. But yeah, those are different things you could like. I bet there's lots of things you might like on that page. Who made these rules? When I become extinct, I want to be a toy for boys, says this dinosaur. Because, you know, when you look around, you do see a lot of clothes for little kids that are boys with dinosaurs on them. And so it makes you think like, well, I guess boys like dinosaurs. I'm the king of colors, and I declare that pink is for girls and blue is for boys. Yes, your majesty. We will follow your every word. Do we need to follow them? What happens if we don't want to? This is a good question to ask yourself about anything. It doesn't mean that you're being rude or disobedient if you ask questions, but sometimes you can be made to feel that way. Why are things the way they are? It's good to wonder about those kinds of things. Have you heard people say any of these things? Boys are strong, girls are pretty. Boys don't cry. Girls are more obedient. Boys like to fight. Girls play with dolls. Boys play sports. Girls are sweet. Boys wear pants. Girls wear dresses. Are these statements always true? No, they're not always true. Sometimes girls are pretty. Sometimes, I don't know, they just look regular. 
boys are sometimes strong and so are some girls. I'm very strong. I can carry lots of stuff. I like being strong. Boys wear pants. Girls wear dresses. I hated wearing dresses when I was little. I found it very annoying and I still don't really like it very much, but I sure like the way they look and I think it's nice when other people wear them. Do you think everyone should be allowed to cry, play with dolls, and play sports if they feel like it? I think they should. I like video games. I like to be the boss. I love to cook. I don't like sports. I'm afraid of spiders. I'm strong. These are things everybody can feel. It doesn't matter what gender you are. The idea that we should follow different sets of rules can make us feel bad. Boys don't play with dolls. And he's thinking, why? I thought I like playing with dolls, but why am I not allowed? Should we feel bad about doing the things we like? I don't think we should feel bad if they're not hurting anyone. What does it even mean to be a girl or a boy? Do we have to be one or the other? Or can we be both at the same time or neither? We are born with small differences in our body. This is our sex. Grown-ups call us a girl or a boy. Scientists call us female or male. A few of us are born in bodies that aren't all female or male. Scientists call us intersex. That means you can have different parts of both genders. You can, both sexes, I mean, you can have, some people have a penis, but they also have ovaries, for example. But who we are is way more complicated than these names. When I was born, I was called a girl, but I feel like a boy. I don't really feel like a boy or a girl. I just want to be me. I feel like I'm both a boy and a girl at the same time. When I was born, I was called a boy, and I feel like a boy. Sometimes I feel more like a boy, and sometimes I feel more like a girl. How we feel inside is called our gender identity. How would you describe your gender? It's different for everyone. Everyone's gender identity is important to them. One way we can show others our respect is by calling them what they want to be called. When you talk about me, I would like you to use the word he. I prefer the word she. The word that I like the most is they. Some people would even say, it's not about what you like, it's actually what you feel. So they would say, I feel the word that most represents me is they, not that they like it the most. Little words like he, she, and they are called pronouns. There are other pronouns too. What pronoun do you want people to use when they talk about you? I didn't know about pronouns when I was little, about the different types of pronouns for gender. I only knew about he and she. So that's based on what we learn and what's around us. When we have more information, we can understand more about people and about the world. No matter who we are, what we like, how we feel, how we dress, and what our body looks like, we all deserve to be loved, protected, and respected. Unfortunately, not everybody agrees, and some people don't believe that all humans should have the same rights. And this is very sad when this happens, because it happens all the time. And it can happen with gender, it can happen with skin color, it can happen with what some people call economic your economic class or like whether you make lots of money or a small amount of money can make people feel bad when you don't treat them the same way that you want to be treated. Throughout history, there have been laws and rules telling people how to behave. Women have been told that they shouldn't wear pants. This was, this was something that, you know, probably your grandma and grandpa and other elderly people in your life would have been made to feel uncomfortable if they were a girl and they had to wear pants and they wanted to wear pants. They weren't allowed to fly planes, run in a marathon, vote. Men have been told that they shouldn't take care of babies, be scared or sad, become a nurse or flight attendant, clean the house. Do you think these laws and rules are fair? See, this is another situation where it's good to, when you see something, ask a question. Why is it that way? Hmm. Is there anything else in your life that you think about that way? Why is it that way? It's good to ask questions. Some governments even made laws telling people who they're allowed to fall in love with. Men should love women and women should love men. Why? We love each other and we're happy this way. 
Do you think all people should be allowed to love whoever they want? I think they should. You can't choose who you love. It just happens. Some laws have prevented men who love men and women who love women from marrying or raising children. But in reality, there are many, many different ways to be a loving family. Did you know that there's even been a time when people of different skin colors were told they weren't allowed to marry each other? That's that's still happened some places. It's just really, really terrible rule because we're all just human beings and we all just want to be loved. What is your family like? There's all different kinds of families. Two dads, two moms, different genders, non-binary, trans, cis, all the different ways that people can be. Today, it's still harder for women to become presidents or to run big companies. Most of the world's leaders are men. We're in charge here. Meanwhile, men are not encouraged to work in caregiving jobs. Most teachers, social workers, and nurses are women. People with other gender identities are also not treated equally. That's something I notice too sometimes when I'm at school, that there's less masculine-looking teachers and more feminine-looking teachers, more women teachers or less men teachers. And also when you go to the doctor's office, if you say you're going to the doctor's office, a lot of times people just assume you're talking about a man doctor. What do you want to be when you grow up? And don't let it affect based, be affected based on what, you're, what gender you are. But there will always be brave people who follow their dreams despite what others think about them. Edward T. Lyon was the first male nurse in the U.S. Army. Richard John Baker and James Michael McConnell were the first male couple to marry in the United States. When she was little, Sarah McBride was called a boy. She was elected to the State Senate of Delaware in 2020. Valentina Tereshkova was the first woman in space. Weiwa was a Zuni Mexican whose sex was male but lived as a two-spirit, which is a third gender in some cultures. Indigenous cultures quite often have two-spirit gender, which is kind of like what we might call trans or non-binary. Malala Yousafzai fought for the right for girls to go to school in her country. And right now in Afghanistan, Girls aren't allowed to go to school, and only boys are allowed. Do you know anyone who followed their dreams? The good news is that the world is changing. It's easier to be who we really are, and we can find friends and allies who support us. Can you imagine how free we would feel if things changed even more in the future? I hope it does. Won't it be nice to live in a world where we can just all be ourselves? I hope, I hope that people feel that they can be themselves and that they live in communities and families that help them to s feel that they're safe being themselves. Fun facts about gender and clothing. 150 years ago, all little kids wore white frilly dresses and long hair. Here's a picture of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the president of the United States when he was four. 100 years ago, fashion magazines told parents that pink is for boys and blue is for girls. In many countries, it's normal for men to wear skirts. Indian Mundu, Celtic Kilt, Sri Lankan Sarong. In the popular TV show Star Trek, male and female crew members wore a dress called a scant. It's a combo of skirt and pants. In Persia, men wore high heels because they made it easier to ride horses, stand tall, and shoot arrows. And that's the end of the book. So why don't I flip it around and I can talk about it a little bit. So I hope you like that book and you learned something in, in that book. That's the thing that books are for. They're for learning. They're for learning about all the things that you didn't know and for expanding your mind and understanding different perspectives and different ways of living and seeing how different people do things. You can learn so much from books and it's really important not to ban them because that's called censorship. That's taking very important information that should be allowed for everyone that should be accessible to every person and deciding having governments and people in authority decide we think this is what you should learn and we don't think this is what you should learn and that's not their right to do that everyone should have access to every all the information that they want and 
check out Elise Gravel's other book. She's got lots of really, really great books. Lots of funny stories, lots of educational stories. And um, share with your friends this great book. You could even buy a whole bunch of them and, and do some gorilla dropping off in your library. Sneak it in there. Or give it to your teachers at school so they can read it to the kids there. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed it and I'm really glad you listened and be proud of your gender and who you are and be proud of your friends and your family and keep people safe and always love people. Try and love everybody, even the ones who are ignorant and don't understand all of the things that you understand. Love, love builds love and hate builds hate. So the more we hate people, the more hate it builds in the world. So try and lead with love if you can. All right, see you next time.